Hi, my name is Kathy Lynch. I'm the Westford Republican Town Committee Chairwoman. I'm the State Committee Woman for the 1st Middlesex District, and I am the host of the Second Opinion Show. Today, we have a special guest, Rayla Campbell. Here's her sign. She is running for Secretary of State. Welcome, Rayla. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's a pleasure to be on. I'd like you to introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about the Secretary of State position. Oh, well, I am Rayla Campbell, and I am running for Secretary of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It's very exciting. I'm born and raised here in Massachusetts. Got three small children, a wonderful husband, and I'm fighting for the people and for our Constitution and what we believe in. A lot of people don't understand about the Secretary of State's office, but there's a lot that it entails, and not only is it the keeper of public records, but also oversight of, in the lead, officer of elections. So we need to make sure that we're protecting our elections, that we're also making sure that we're protecting the consumer, the, the small business owner. These are really important, impor very important um, actual aspects of the Secretary of State's office that a lot of people don't really understand. And then also when it comes to Freedom of Information Act and FOIA requests, as a lot of people don't know how to go about getting a FOIA request or what happens when you're blocked at getting a FOIA request at the local level, that you can appeal to the Secretary of State's office. I want to make sure we're protecting our history, we're protecting our elections, and we're protecting the people of Massachusetts by allowing them to know exactly what is going on throughout the state as the keeper of public rec records should be giving to the people of Massachusetts. That's fabulous. <laughs> we you. need that, Rila. We do. We do. We need strong leadership, and we also need to make sure that we have a transparency and accountability, and that people are aware of what is going on in their local communities, when their elections are happening, who is on the ballot. And we really need to be voting in person, showing voter ID on election day, not month. We have seen all of the stories where they go around and they say that, you know, asking for foreign ID is racist, but now we have them passing a law here in Massachusetts that gives illegal immigrants a driver's license, which automatically registers them to vote. Again, another process that you're automatically opted in, and you're, it's your responsibility to opt out. So you should be having to check, not check this box to be opted out of something. You should automatically be opted out of it, and if you want to vote, then you check the box to opt in. But that's not the situation. Not to mention, they didn't ask the citizens of Massachusetts how we felt about that. So they go around telling black people that it's racist to ask for an ID to vote, but then they want to give it to illegals who have no business being here driving on our roads, hence the word illegal, which is replacing the vote of the American citizen. This has got to stop. It's dangerous behavior, and we need to be protecting us, the American people, first and foremost. And I see that we haven't had that type of leadership and that type of protection, especially when it comes to our elections. Well, um, just, you have a lot to say, a lot to share, which is great, and we can get more into that. Um, how has it been going so far on the campaign trail? Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, this is my second stop for today, and I have another stop later <laughs> all the way out on the other side of the state. We've been doing a lot of crisscrossing the state and well within the same day, too. But the energy and the support that we're getting out there is incredible. I have people asking for my signs constantly. We are going through them. <laughs> like, it's very nice. But we are going through them very fast, and it, it's just having that support and that backing from the people of Massachusetts has been truly incredible. But we also need support, and we need that help, but we got to keep getting that momentum going, make sure people understand and how important it is this year to get out there and to vote. This is a local election. This happened. All, what happens locally is so much more important than what's going on nationally because mm -hmm. it's affecting you directly right now. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, for this particular position, why did you want to run? Because I know in the past you've run for different um, positions. So what is it about this position that really had you um, intrigued? Well, 
I was all with all intentions of running again against Diana Presley, the two I ran against in 2020. And the current Secretary of State actually broke the law and violated my constitutional rights in order to keep me off the ballot. I'll get to that in a second. But we were under a tremendous amount of attacks during their summer of love and their peaceful protests while wow. running during the 2020 election. And my family was targeted numerous times. We were violently assaulted. Wow. We were threatened. It was, it was a very dangerous situation. And so that's the reason why I don't bring my family with me everywhere. But then we also decided that our community where we were living was no longer safe for us. And we were seeing an increase in violence, an increase in gangs, an increase. And I lived in the suburbs. And in, it was just an in, increase of gun violence, especially in, within the neighborhood and break in. So mm. we were getting targeted whenever we go grocery shopping by people who didn't agree with us. And I wasn't going to have my children subjected to that type of behavior, especially by adults, because I. I'm a strong mom and I'm a strong patriot and I push back. I don't allow anybody to try to intimidate me or try to scare me or threaten me in any way. I stand my ground. I'm very proud of that. God has given me the strength to be here and to be a force to be reckoned with. And I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to allow people to scare me. So we put our house up and we're like, you know what? Let's put our house up. It's a great time to sell and move somewhere else. And we did. So we moved out of the district. And then I was like, all right, so originally I was running for a lieutenant governor, and it was very exciting because I fight on so many issues that I can cover. But I really wanted to do something and to be some, someone that is going to make a difference and an impact in what's going on in Massachusetts. And we have a lawsuit currently against the Secretary of State's office and the Boston Elections Commission for not recounting my ballots. They completely refused. They've recounted others. Why not mine? <laughs> Why? What is the reason you won't recount mine? They still won't. They completely ignore me, wow. just like act like I'm not even there. It's pretty disrespectful. So that's when I was like, you know what, this Secretary of State has an opinion of the law. We have that on video, that that's what they said, in order to keep me off the ballot, which in 2020, the number of signatures required to get on the ballot was lowered and cut in half due to COVID to 1,000. I ran as a write-in and I got 1,200, which is clearly more than 1,000, but they like common core math, so they can't figure that out. And they denied me being on the ballot, saying I had to get the pre-COVID standard of 2,000 signatures in order to get on the ballot, which violated my constitutional rights by giving the incumbents an advantage over me and broke the current law that we had in place. So wow. I can't believe they got away with that. Yes, so exactly. So you have a lawsuit going now. So we have a lawsuit going now, and you know we're fighting hard. And it, it, this is another reason why we need somebody in there that will not violate the Constitution and break the law to suit their own political agenda. It's always one party rule in this state, and we've seen that for so long, and it's time to make a change. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that we know that the people that are counting the ballots are actually doing their job because we saw that in 2020. Didn't matter how many of us went out and legally voted, it mattered who counted the votes as per the numbers, historic numbers in 2020. Mm -hmm. And yet somebody won from their basement who didn't get out there to campaign. And if you saw the numbers, the totals that they were giving us, that's more, num that's more votes than there are legally citizens registered to vote in the country. So it's simple math. A lot of questions out there. A lot of I mean, questions. A lot of questions that just haven't really been finalized with answers, um, or there are, but they're ignored. And it's a mess. A lot yes. of people are upset about the 2020 election. Um, but you brought up a lot of things, like, for instance, you have children. Yes. <laughs> so um, how many do you have? I have three small children. I have a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 5-year-old son. So wow. two girls and a little boy. Oh. So very, very You're busy. Very honored to have, or blessed to have children. Yes. And um, are they doing okay with you on the campaign trail? They, they miss me <laughs> a lot. I miss them a lot. It is tough on the days where, we're, where I'm gone. Like today is a day that I, I saw them sleeping, and I'm gone from the time that 
yeah. they're before they're awake to when they're going to be asleep. So when I get home, it'll probably be really late because we're going out to Southwick. So that's a hike. And, and they're doing well, though. You know, we keep them busy. We keep them outside and active. And yeah. we got a pool, so they're swimming in it. And, yeah. But they're just, they are my joy, my love, and amazing children. They know why I'm out there doing this. So right. after being attacked, we were attacked at the Million MAGA March in D.C., it really shed a light on what is going on in this country and just how mean people can be and that they do not really care about children at all when they will go and physically try to assault a child and grab a stroller from a mother. It's, it wow. was very bizarre. You're a heck of a fighter <laughs> you need to stand up to all that. And um, I admire that. That's, that's good. We need strong people out there yes. that are fighters and not just going to um, succumb to a bully. Yeah. So um, good for you. Thank you. Um, so what do you think, when you're out there, what do you think the gist is of the public? Uh, what do you run into when you talk to people? How are they feeling about things? Um, you know, what's the general sense? <laughs> we get a lot of, you've got this, you've got this, I'm supporting you, I'm voting for you, I'm so proud of you. And it's, there's a lot of energy when you're out there, and we need to bring that energy. But people still want to know, do we have enough Republicans that are going to be fighting back? So they're, it's, they're excited about my campaign and what we're doing, but they also want more leadership and they want to be excited about everybody. So when I see what's going on, I know that we have the strength of the people. They are very, very, very excited to have a strong woman running and who's going to be a leader out there and who's fighting on the issues and listening. So when I go everywhere mm -hmm, throughout mm -hmm. the state, the problems that we have in our communities, it is a lot of communities that are dealing with everything when it comes to our education system and when it comes to the books and the sex ed curriculum. And then I find out, do a little digging because, you know, God gave me this beautiful brain that I like to use and learn. So I found out that the Secretary of the Commonwealth is on the Board of Library Trustees. And that mm. just opened up my eyes. And there's, also, there's so many aspects of this job because, remember, it's the secretary of the entire state, the keeper of the state seal, the protector of the state seal. Nothing gets approved without the seal. Mm. So we need to be making sure that we're seeing what is going on and what is being put into our schools, into our libraries that our tax dollars are paying. And if we approve of this, because we shouldn't be having pornography, child pornography, mm -hmm. in our schools, right. in our libraries, right under parents' noses, and they had no idea it was going on. So there's a lot that we've been fighting on. Right, well, I, I can uh, agree with you on that, because I did speak at a school committee meeting about what was in the books that they're recommending um, parents read to their children. So it is, it's a disgrace, really. Um, but you, you, br you bring up the political climate, which, um, you know, it's not a certain thing. It's either going to be a blue state, a purple state, or a red state. <laughs> and the jury's out. What's your opinion? You know, I think we already have been purple. We just, our red base has been so disenfranchised to vote because we don't have leaders that are out there running. How many times do you pull a Republican ballot and it's empty? That is the biggest problem. We need people running. So when you look at the state and you're traveling around it like I am, there's major pockets of just straight red. And you're the, small, the smaller pockets are blue. And that's, but those are the bigger cities. So it makes it look like, oh my gosh, we're a blue state. No, because the bigger cities, they control those. They can control a message better. There's, you know, more people that aren't tuned in to what is going on with, whereas you have the suburbs and the smaller cities, they are in tune to what's going on and parents are waking up and they're pushing back. But it is very red, surprisingly, especially out west. So <clears throat> outside of 495, we do have a state 
and it exists. <laughs> and there's a lot of people out there, and they have been dealing with a lot of the stuff that now is coming to light on the East Coast for years, and they've been fighting, but we don't see it because it's like the state is separated. And I'm bringing everybody together because we're all fighting on the same issues. And when it, we're talking about what happens in the city, it affects the entire state. Mm -hmm. So we need to be making sure that we're active and we're getting people involved and our RTCs are up and running and we have constant meetings mm -hmm. and we're getting candidates to run at the local level all mm -hmm. the time. We need to be challenging them on their issues and pushing back big time. And I think a lot of people are, are seeing that now. And I guess the shutdown has opened up a lot of people's eyes to realize what happens when you think that, oh, I'll just let somebody else do it and they know what they're doing. And you see what government can do when it gets corrupted and when it becomes one party rule. Right. We certainly saw a lot of tyranny the past two years where they're telling us what to do and not giving us the choice. I think that the left has really gone far, far left, and a lot of the middle is seeing that. Yes. Um, you brought up a couple of issues, and, and people are, parents in the middle, they're just saying, I, I'm not going along with that. So, um, so there is hope. Um, and we always talk about the middle ground, the, the unenrolled, because the ma yes. vast majority of people are unenrolled. They haven't chosen uh, the right or the left. So um, that's where your chance is. And, and it's interesting that you're running for a uh, secretary of state position, which deals with the elections. So um, if the elections are not run fairly, then then all bets are off. Yeah. And so we really need someone to do a fair, be in there who's going to do a fair election and not um, destroy our laws so that Republicans don't have a chance. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you would like to see differently. Um, and you, spent, you talked a little bit of, about that at the beginning, like the voter ID, uh, for example. But um, is there anything else that you think that you could do better uh, that will help the people have know that their vote counts. Well, I think we should be doing away with electronic voting machines and, and the voting systems, the Dominion voting machines. We should be voting by paper, and they should be hand counted. It is very simple to count bubbles. So we've seen the clerks have to verify addresses names, making sure that this is this person's signature and that they're registered to vote when we're collecting on the nomination process. So when you're going to cast your ballot, you're filling in a bubble. Why is it so difficult to count the bubbles? It's not. And we shouldn't be relying on machines that are hooked up to the internet. As much as they want to try to say, oh no, we've got all the security in place, no, anything hooked up to the internet is going is its highest risk of it being hacked and having fraud applied to it because anybody can hack into a system mm -hmm. and we know that we've had major problems with hacking in Massachusetts in a lot of our government systems. So we need to be voting by paper and have, we have some of the oldest and the original ballot Boxes, mail the boxes that you put in, wooden boxes down on the Cape. They've never had a problem. It's hand counted. It's checks and balances, and then also making sure that there's equality. When they use that word, they use it in a different way. When we use that word, we're talking about when we have the, the um, election officers sitting there, and then also our ballot, our poll workers. Why is it that they never pick from the Republican list? We'll send in a list, we're required to have equal representation, and we're not allowed to. You'll have all Democrats unenrolled, and maybe five Republicans throughout the whole area, when the RTCs will send in a list of how many ever, depending on the town that they have, 20, 30, 40. Why aren't any of them? You, it's just not fair the way that they're, they're putting forth how they're running elections. And then also when it comes to counting and recounting the ballots, we seem to have all these di discrepancies when it's a Republican. And then we have to go to court. They want one-party system, so that's why there really needs to be oversight 
there needs to be a whole new line of training because what I experienced in this nomination process would blow your mind. We actually had a town clerk who put a table inside the polling station with all Democrats running for office statewide and locally in the polling station. That is completely illegal and unconstitutional. And how is that not giving the Democrats an advantage over Republicans? So Republicans seem to always be disenfranchised and at a, a lower rate here in Massachusetts being, being able to qualify to get on the ballot because of the, the everything, the policies they put in place and how many we have that are unenrolled. We don't have a huge Republican Party. They have a supermajority. They want to keep it that way. And that's why when you look at what's going on, why are ballots being printed with the wrong dates on it or without candidates' names, Republican candidates' names and having to be reprinted? This is serious behavior. And it has been going on for somebody that has been in office for longer than I've been alive and the Secretary of State for almost 30 years. Well, Rayla, uh, it is important. You're bringing up some good points in that we knew we need Republicans to step forward and work at the polls. And um, depending on what town you're in, I think, yes. I, th I don't think all towns are not allowing um, Republicans to work in there. But I think it's important that if we don't, if we don't have Republicans step up, then there's going to be less of them. Yeah. So we need to activate our people, get them at the polls. Um, and involved. as far as the, you know, we talked about the political climate in that um, it's more Democrat. Well, they do run. Uh, they have more people running for the seats. So again, yeah. if Republicans don't run, that is a hindrance to the party. Um, but what happens is they get into power, right? And then now they start making all the policy. Yeah. And even though there may be more Republicans in a community, if they have Democrats as their state rep, or on the various committees in town, it feels blue, you yes. know? And I think they know that. Um, so, so it's up to us, Republicans, mm -hmm. to try to make a difference. And, and engagement. We need a lot of engagement from the party. And even, where is our national party? Where, where are they? They, they we have two. Yep, we have we, we Janet and Ron support. Kaufman, you know, Janet Fogarty and Ron Kaufman. Where are they? But they've done fundraisers for candidates that are in another state, but not candidates here in our own state. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that it, it drives a lot of the people, the base of Republican people, away because they're like they don't, they're not out there actively supporting the candidates and getting people involved in growing the party. That's what a strong party does. The Democrats are out there doing that. They're in the schools. They're trying to recruit. You know, they're doing all sorts of events everywhere. They have a lot of their meetings all the time. That's what Republicans need to do in this state, is get active and get people involved and go out into the community and talk and shake hands. There's so many of like minds and they, what do I hear throughout most of the place? I thought I was the only one. I thought I, I didn't, there's so many, I'm just finding out there's all these groups that are like me and they think like, and I thought I was the only one. We all feel like we're the only Republicans here, but there's so many more of us, but we need our RTCs and our state committee members to get active out there with us. And we know the party is a mess right now, but if we want to win, we got to unify and we got to be strong because divided we fall and that's exactly what the Democrats prey on on us here in Massachusetts. If they can keep that division, we will never succeed. But we're going to change that this year. <laughs> I mean, I do believe that there, we are changing for the better. I see a lot more people getting involved, definitely um, coming forward, getting involved. So that's good. More candidates this year. Um, so, so there is reason to be positive yes. about this. Um, so if you look at the different candidates that are running for this position, what makes you think that you know, you can um, do a better job and tell us a little bit about your qualifications or the reasons why you think you could do uh, the best job. Common sense, love of my country, <laughs> protecting our constitution, knowing our rights and, and the laws and what the people want. That is what makes a great secretary, is making sure you're out there for the people. What we see with the, the current secretary of state is he is entrenched. He has been there for so long. Like, and there has, he has made 
you know, way in, in certain areas and progress, but not for the majority of everything that we see, he breaks the law a lot to suit his needs or to suit the left's needs. And when we are wondering what's going on with our military ballots and how come they're not getting their absentee ballots in time to participate in our local election, these are, this is somebody who's been in office for almost 30 years and he can't seem to get anything right, still printing ballots wrong. Maybe he's a little too old <laughs> and he needs to change. The other one is a crazy radical extremist, as they like to always call me. Oh, and Galvin calls me names too. But she's backed by Ayanna Presley. And she wants to make the Secretary of State's office more involved in abortions. So what, what does the law and the Constitution say that the Secretary of State's office should be involved in abortion rights, and she wants to call it reproductive rights. However, to reproduce, you need to give birth to said baby. If you're not reproducing, that's not reproductive rights, because you're terminating. And the sec I'm pro-life, and I tell everybody that it's life liberty and the pursu pursuit of happiness. Without life, what do we have? Mm -hmm. We have nothing, and we will have no country to fight for. Yeah. So we should be preserving life and educating our children and teaching them in school how to give back and to thrive in the community and to be prosperous and to have a family and grow. Mm -hmm. These crazy radical agenda ideas that they want to push through, it's like now they want to bring Planned Parenthood into the Secretary of State's office. That's enough. Enough wow. is enough. It's the people of Massachusetts have fought and died for our freedom. This is where liberty and freedom were born. And we've got to make sure we're standing strong and we're fighting for it. And that's exactly what I'll do when I become your first Madam Secretary. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. I love the message of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, we need to respect life, all yeah. life, and not discard it, um, because where does that end? Um, so that's a very inspirational thing to leave us with, and we are kind of getting towards the end of our time. So I want to see if you could tell us how can people help you, um, and let's see what else help you, um, how can they contact you? Yes. And again, I'll show your sign. <laughs> yes. It's a nice little photo. <laughs> and people can help me. They can get involved. They can go to my website. It's Rayla4MA.com. That's R-A-Y-L-A-F-O-R-M-A.com. You can also follow me on Facebook, Rayla Campbell from Massachusetts. I also have a radio show every Thursday from 9 to 11. It's out of Nashua, it's on WSMN Live, and then also it streams through my Facebook page, and if you have Alexa and you're following me, you could just say Alexa, play WSMN Nashua, and you can get it. And it does reach a lot of the um, northern part of the state, so if you do listen on the AM, it's 1590 AM, and some areas can get FM, and that's 95.3 FM, but we definitely need support we need help, we need people to get involved, and they can do that by going to my website or my Facebook page. Well, Rayla, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing what you're about and what this position is about and how you can help. Um, so thank you very much, and I wish you blessings on this next election, September 6th and then November 8th. This is Kathy Lynch with the Second Opinion Show. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you, Rayla. Thank you, Kathy. God bless you.